Welcome to the third Sunday of Easter. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. To the one who is seated upon the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might for ever and ever. Let us worship God. Let us pray. O living Lord, you meet us in unexpected places and surprise us with the abundance of your love. Feed us by your word and fill us with your spirit so that we may follow you this day and always. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior. Amen. Let us hear the word of God as it comes to us from the Holy Scriptures for our further comfort and instruction. The scripture lesson this morning is taken from John chapter 21, verses 1 to 19. Hear the word of the Lord. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And in this way, he showed himself. Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We are going with you also. They went out and immediately got into the boat, and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning had now come, Jesus stood on the shore, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said to them, Children, have you any food? They answered him, No. And he said to them, Cast the net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast and now they were not able to draw it in because of the multitude of fish. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he had removed it and plunged into the sea. But the other disciples came in the little boat, for they were not far from land, but about two hundred cubits dragging the net with fish. Then as soon as they had come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid on it, and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish which you have just caught. Simon Peter went up and dragged the net to land, full of large fish. One hundred and fifty-three. And although there were so many, the net was not broken. Jesus said to them, Come and eat breakfast. Yet none of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? Knowing that it was the Lord. Jesus then came and took the bread and gave it to them, and likewise the fish. This is now the third time Jesus showed himself to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Most assuredly, I say to you, when you were younger, you girded yourself and walked where you wished. But when you were old, you will stretch out your hands, and another will gird you and carry you where you do not wish. This he spoke, signifying by what death he would glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said to him, Follow me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, 
Well, here I am again with another piece of fishing equipment. I think the last time I showed you my new fishing reel. Don't have a rod for it yet, but I'll be getting one. Here we have the fishing net. And, well, the story about Jesus uh, who was on the, the beach near the Sea of Tiberias, and his disciples had grown tired and weary. They were really pretty despondent and cast down after Jesus died, was crucified. And they said, well, let's go fishing. So they go back to their fishing. And they go out overnight, and to add, of course, to their sadness, they catch no fish, none whatsoever. And then they see this stranger. They see this stranger. And the stranger asks them, have you any food? He's wanting to have some breakfast on the beach. They said, well, no, we don't. We've caught nothing. We're out all night. So Jesus said, well, go out again. And this time, cast your nets on the right side of your boat. They were a little skeptical about doing this, but they did so. And, of course, as Colleen just told in the Gospel story, they caught so many fish that their nets were straining. So many fish. And then they came ashore and they knew they were talking to the Lord. They recognized him. They were happy. Jesus says, you got a few more fish there. We'll do a fry up. Do a good breakfast. And as you know, there's nothing like a good breakfast. And then in the later part of the reading, George Jesus asks Peter for his love, not only for his love. He asks Peter, do you love me? He said, yes, Lord, I do. Well, feed my sheep. So there is a test of love, but there is also a commandment. And so we are commanded as well. We're given a new commandment to love one another, to feed one another, especially to feed one another God's holy word. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, hear our prayer. Day and night we're in your care. Look upon us from above and show to us your love. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, one of the things that we encounter in this life is the difficulty of human connection. We found it most difficult during the pandemic. As a matter of fact, in many ways, it had a terrible effect upon people's health, particularly people that were in care homes, that were isolated without the presence of family or friends. And they're saying that with all the technology that we have at our fingertips, we are still a very lonely people. One of the worst malaises amongst society today is that of loneliness. And I know for a fact that loneliness has taken some of our older people during the past two years. One-on-one -on -one contact is more challenging to achieve People are growing frustrated with their failed attempts of building better relationships in the workplace, the community, at home. And sadly, the connections made in our Zoom meeting world quickly dissolve with the fading light on the screen. Then there's another way. 
as people of the New Testament were invited in a new covenant with God. The ultimate force in our lives, a covenant that, above all, assures us access to the Father through his Son, Jesus Christ. His accessibility is revealed throughout the Gospels, as he readily associates with not just friends, but all who need him. The scripture is rich in example. Today's Gospel, which Colleen read, some of Jesus' disciples are out in the boat fishing, and suddenly the risen Lord appears. Soon they're all having a meal together, they're having breakfast on the beach, and after they've eaten, Jesus initiates a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Simon Peter. Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus answers, tend my lambs. Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus answers, look after my sheep. Simon, son of John, do you love me? Lord, you know everything, he says. You know I love you. Jesus answers, feed my sheep. When Jesus asks, do you love me? We can almost read between the lines. Not next week, Simon Peter. Not at some future a date after you've had some time to think things over, to weigh the pros and cons of following me wherever it takes you. Remember this, Simon Peter, he's saying. Mere words aren't enough. To express your love for me and mean it, you must feed my lambs. Look after my sheep. Feed my sheep. And you must do it now. They say that when Mother Teresa died, many eulogists called her a saint. But some will say, well, who would want to be a saint these days, in this kind of world? But the very word usually conjures up all sorts of images of dead people in stained glass windows, or people on the pages of scripture, people far removed from our real-world experience. Today we use the word saint to describe the pious person that we don't want to be. We quickly dissociate ourselves by saying, I'm no saint. Well, the renowned American humorist Will Rogers saw this clearly when he visited Rome one time. He cut right to the heart of the matter, saying, You know, I find it interesting that everybody wants to see where St. Peter was buried, but no one wants to live like him. One-on-one, -on -one, the Lord is asking, Do you love me? Yes, Lord, you know we love you. Then feed my lambs, Look after my sheep, feed my sheep, and do it now, Jesus tells us. Tom Wright likens it to the over-enthusiastic friend who comes to the dinner party and wants to help wash up right away, and up he jumps to help when we would just assume that he, he sit down with the rest of the, the, the dinner party, but uh, he picks up a new crystal water jug maybe that we got a few weeks earlier and uh, he begins to wipe it down and of course someone then turns and he didn't notice at the same time until it was too late and the broken glass is it's shattered on the floor he's crestfallen and of course we're devastated but try not to show up. He sweeps up the broken glass off the floor. He promised to buy us another jug, and he left a little later in a flood of apologies. 
we struggle to think through what forgiveness would mean in a case like that. We were upset, of course, but we knew it had happened because he was just too eager for his own good. We think about it a lot, then a couple of weeks later, we invite him back to a meal again. And this time, he says, after the meal, we invite him to help us clean up. And again, we gave him a towel, and he looked at us in a stare of disbelief. But we smiled, and he helped, and everything was fine. It's a nice allegory that Tom Wright uses here because this scene between Jesus and Peter is one of the more spectacular interchanges in the whole of the New Testament, perhaps in all of literature. The most remarkable thing about it is that by way of forgiveness, Jesus gives Peter a job to do. When Peter promises his love, Jesus doesn't say, Oh, well, that's all right then. Well then, feed my lambs, look after my sheep, and feed my sheep. He just doesn't cut it off there. Certainly, there is time to learn how to be a shepherd. Time to feed lambs and sheep and to look after them. And not only is this a fresh commission, not only is Jesus trusting Peter to get back to fruitful work and to turn his undoubted, though hitherto wobbly love for Jesus to good account, it is more. Jesus is sharing his own work, his own ministry with Peter. Tom Wright from his little commentary, John for Everyone. It is Jesus, after all, who is the Good Shepherd. It is Jesus who has the task of leading and feeding his sheep and lambs, guiding them to and from pasture, keeping them, keeping them away from predators. Certainly, when we look at the secret of all Christian ministry, we know that Jesus knows them, they know him. As a good shepherd, he has now given his life for them. But the commission here was quite specific. As the Father has sent me, so I'm sending you. And there's no getting away from it. And this is what it means Peter is to share in Jesus' task of shepherding. This is the secret of all Christian ministry, yours and mine, lay and ordained, full-time or part-time. Certainly, we know that it's the secret of everything from being a quiet back row member of a prayer group to being a platform speaker at huge rallies. If you're going to do any single solitary thing as a follower and servant of Christ, this is what it's built on. And somewhere deep down inside, there is a love for Jesus, and through, well, goodness knows, you, you're, you've been let down enough times, perhaps, he wants you to find that love, to give you a chance to express it, to heal the hurts and failures of the past, and give you new work to do. And I think the thing to remember is that these are things that you, you don't do to earn the forgiveness. We know nothing can ever do that. We know, certainly, from stories of missionaries, that more Christians have been killed around the world simply for worshiping Jesus. Peter will complete his task as a shepherd by laying down his own life in turn for the sheep. 
But even this is not something different from the call that drew the disciples in the first place. Follow me. Now that Jesus has taken the steep road to the cross and has proved that death itself is defeated by the life and joy of the new creation, he can ask for everything from those he has rescued and know that he will get it. And so Peter went from strength to strength. He was still muddled from time to time, as the book of Acts will tell us. But he became a shepherd. He loved Jesus and looked after his sheep. No one could ask for more. Jesus never asks for less. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now unto him be ascribed in the church by Christ Jesus all glory, honor, dominion, majesty, and power, world without end. Amen. The response after the words, O Lord our God, will be, we cry to you for help. O Lord our God, we cry to you for help. Let us pray. We pray this day, O God, for those who are persecuted for their faith. Give them freedom, peace, and safety. O Lord our God, we cry to you for help. We pray for those who breathe curses and threats. Give them new hearts and new lives to glorify you. O Lord our God, we cry to you for help. We pray for those who work by day and night. Give them satisfaction and rest from their labors. O Lord our God, we cry to you for help. We pray for those who fear their efforts are in vain. Fill their lives with your providence and grace. O Lord our God, we cry to you for help. We pray for all who suffer in sickness and grief. Give them healing, hope, and joy. O Lord our God, we cry to you for help. We pray for the faithful in every nation of the earth. Give them voices to praise your name forever. O oh Lord our God, we cry to you for help. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus, who loves us, who feeds us, who saves us, and who teaches us to pray, saying together, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will, will be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Jesus said, Feed my lambs, tend my sheep, follow me. To the one who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honor, glory and might, forever and ever. And grace, mercy and peace of God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen.